Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Browner and Lawhead on our Friday. It is Wednesday, technically, but it's our Friday because you know how we do around here. John Browner, Jason Lawhead, a sleepy, decorative Jason Lawhead in the building mm -hmm. here on the Mightier mm -hmm. 290 ESPN from Monday through Wednesday, 6 to 7 p.m. We are the show that has the most fun on this station. You can find everything you hear on the show at the iTunes podcast store and on YouTube at Kaplan and Crew. We are Brown and Lawhead, which are which is within that, the Great Friends Podcast Network. If you are watching the show, if you follow the show, if you're a friend of the program, you know by the time you get to us, you already know the news. We're here to have fun with the facts, baby. We're here to have fun with the facts. We're going to do a little something called John's List today. John's List is how we basically determine who's going to win this weekend's playoff games. We're going to give you two games per segment. How we do the John's List. We pick the best quarterback from the game, the best skill positions from the game, the best defensive team from the game, and, of course, we pick the coach. And from that, we determine who the winner is and what the score is going to be. So... We're going to kick this thing off first by saying, what up, Jason? What up? What's going on with you? Doing good, man. You know me. I, I I just can't wait to get to the list. You know me. I can't wait to get to talking football, whatever I can jabber about. We only get a short time, so I'm always jacked up to do it. Got a All little right, so coffee. Let's get, let, let's, get, let's, get right to the, let's get right to the stew, as they say. Game one, we're talking. Bills, Bengals. Now, the time of these games, you'll figure that out on your own. This is not in any chronological order. We're giving you the games as we see entertainment-wise to give you the games. Bills, Bengals. Jason, quarterback. I tell you right now, the way these teams are playing, I'm taking Joe Burrow and the way these quarterbacks have played and as fast and loose as Josh Allen has played, that game he played against... Miami would have lost a lot of playoff games. I, I thought he played fast and loose. He's played fast and loose quite a bit. He turns the ball over in head scratching situations where I think Joe Burrow doesn't. When Joe Burrow does maybe throw a pick once in a while, it usually doesn't hurt him or them. Um, so I'm going to take Joe Burrow. I mean, he's been there. He was the guy that's coming off the, the AFC championship. He was able to be a guy that could take this team through a road destination last year to get to the Super Bowl. And I, yeah, I like Joe Burrow. I like Josh Allen. And here's why. I think Josh Allen knows that he could have lost the game last week. I think Josh Allen also knows that this offense is overly dependent on him. I think these teams are both very quarterback driven. And I think that the ability to run his athletic ability is what I think gives him the edge over Burrow because both these guys can throw. Joe's got a little bit of more poise to him, but Josh Allen's got such a level of brute force that he plays the position with. So I just think that I see Josh Allen being able to do things in this game that we won't really necessarily see Joe Burrow do because of their skill difference. So I like Josh Allen when we're talking quarterbacks in this game, not by a lot, not by a lot, but by enough that I think that's going to be the difference in the game. All right. I like that. You, but you know, that one, you said a word in there, which I think you're right. And I think it hits it on the head is there, you know, I think Buffalo is more over dependent on Josh Allen. Yes. There's no doubt. And I think that favors Burrow and, and the Bengals in a sense, because Burrow um, is the kind of quarterback that is kind of, you're right. Poise. He's got that Montana mm -hmm. type of poise and he's just, but they, they don't over depend on them, right? So I think that's where the and for me at least the advantage lies where Joe knows Joe, Joe knows his offense, and Joe isn't gonna try. Even if things get mucky and, and you know, like in a game against Baltimore and it's not the way you want to come out, Joe knows stay in your lane. This will get better. There's a lot of football to play, and I that's kind of where I give the advantage. I'm glad that you said that the Bills are over dependent offensively and and i think that's kind of a detriment to allen in a sense skill positions now this this is tricky this is very tricky because i think the Bengals have a good run game 
I don't think they use it properly. The Bills have no run game other than Josh Allen. They both have really good standout receivers. Who do you have skill-wise? I like the Bengals, and mainly because of the ability Joe has to spread the ball around. Um, whether that running game's overrated or not, it shows up. It did, you know, it struggled against Baltimore. Baltimore had that game plan. They weren't going to let Joe Mixon hurt them on long first down runs. They weren't going to let him uh, get loose, and um, that was the that was the game plan, and it, it favored Baltimore. I just think that. Uh, Burrow is able to spread the ball around to more guys and his big play hitters are there. And I just think in the small sample size that you saw a few weeks ago before the DeMar Hamlin injury that, that um, ended that game, I really felt like, you know, that's where they were going. I mean, Higgins had just moved a, a, a first down with extra yardage into that play into Buffalo territory. They were seemingly going to make that game 14 to three, possibly 10 to three. And I just feel like, He's he's got more weapons to spread the ball around, even if Buffalo schemes here or there or just here or there. Um, I like Bengals. I, I mean, <laughs> Bengals may have the best skill positions anybody left collectively in the in the playoffs. I think, yeah, I think this is an easy one for the Bengals, even though they don't use their run game. Joe Mixon is a better running back than what the Bills have. I think Jamar Chase might be, if I'm off the top of my head, I think Jamar Chase might be the best wide receiver left. T. Higgins, fantastic number two. Uh, I, for, so for skill positions, man, I like the Bengals. Boyd's now, a good three. Tyler Boyd is a very, very good uh, three. He'd be a so one I, on, I, I mean, some teams. He'd be a one on the Bears. He'd be a one on the Bears. He'd probably uh, be a one on the Giants, who's a, who's a playoff team. or at least a, Or at least a strong two. I mean... So I, um, I I like the Bengals skill positions. Like I said, I think their yeah. their usage of the usage of those uh, skills necessarily only kind of hinge on Jamar Chase. But I like the Bengals skill positions. I like the yeah. Bengals skill positions. You have to defense, 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 defense. Who you take a defense? You know, I'm gonna take the Bengals again. <laughs> You know, I just feel like they've played in a more physical division throughout the season. I feel that they played a more physical game. I think the reason they won that game is because they darn near matched Baltimore's physicality defensively when both teams and Baltimore came in. I, I really think that the Bengals have, have the, the most physical team that they would see in the AFC in the rearview mirror and got them out of the way, and that was Baltimore. And um, I just think with you know you, the way you saw Miami able to come back in that football game, um, obviously, Allen turned the ball over in some instances, and the offense sputtered to start out that you know end of that first half and start out that third second half third quarter. Um, I just think you know those kind of windows are only going to benefit Cincinnati's offense. So I like Cincinnati's defense. Um, now they're going to have to they can, it, 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 go back to skill positions, right? It's going to be Allen and Stephon Diggs. Can they be the two man wrecking crew that they can be? And that's where the Bengals are going to have to outlast them defensively is yeah. D Diggs is going to get his catches. Allen's going to get his completion and his yardages, but is it going to be the kind that just wrecks the game? And that's where Cincinnati has to be really good. Time will tell, but I still like or, the Bengals defense on an, on a slight edge. Here, I like the Bills defense, and I like the Bills defense a lot. I got to tell you, I and it comes with a caveat. The Bengals' offensive line is ravaged. It just mm -hmm. is. The right side. And, and I think that that's going to be what the downfall is when it comes to who can do what. Because I think the Bengals, I think the Bengals' defense is solid. They've got a bunch of no-name guys. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not good because these same no-name guys carried them to the Super Bowl. These same no-name guys made plays against Patrick Mahomes last year. These same no-name guys made plays all postseason last year. And I don't expect that to be any different this time around. So I think you're going to see the Bengals make plays, but I think you're going to see the Bills defense make more plays. By a caveat of saying that offensive line is really a 
patchwork at this point, and we're too late in the season to be doing patchwork offense, line, offensive lines. Defensive lines, maybe you can survive. Offensive lines, I don't think you can because, they're again, they're so it goes back to being so dependent on Joe Burrow and him being able to do things that make their offense go. And I just don't I don't I don't see them being able to outdo the Bills defense because I think those injuries are too much for them. So I'm going Bills defense. OK. All right. Coach. Who you got? Coach, I'm going to give I got Zach Taylor by a slight edge. You know, obviously he's taken this team to a Super Bowl. Buffalo, I think a lot of people have expected them to already have gotten to one by now. Um, you know, I'm not knocking McDermott, but I don't know if he's, you know, some great coach. He's not a bad coach. He's not going to be a kind of coach that um, uh, you look at and go, man, they, 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 this season tanked or this game tanked because McDermott just couldn't get out of his own way. However, I just don't know if, you know, uh, I like what Zach Taylor, his staff, totally everything that the kind of intangibles, everything last year carrying over into this year, they didn't have that, you know, uh, sophomore slump, so to speak, or that, you know, uh, let down from, from going to the Super Bowl last year. So, yeah, I'm going to take uh, Zach Taylor and a slight edge. I, I like the Bengals in this game. See, I'm different on Zach Taylor. I think Zach Taylor and Matt LaFleur are the same guy, and I don't like either one of them. I think Zach Taylor without without Joe Burrow is how they got Joe Burrow. I don't, I, I, I don't see him when Joe Burrow's out. I don't see the wisdom. I don't see the, the creativity. I don't see the next level offensive uh, 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 trickery. I don't see the the play design. I don't see it if Joe Burrow's not around. So for me, I'm going with Sean McDermott. And I also think what happened to Sean McDermott last week against Miami, he cannot be out coached two games in a row. And this is the defensive guy. So now this is an offensive coach against a defensive coach. And this is the last defensive coach left. So Sean McDermott's got a lot riding on this. He's got to come out and he's got to shut that that Bengal offense down. And I think that's going to. And I think that's why I'm giving Sean McDermott. I think that's why I'm giving Sean McDermott or force him into some mistakes, throwing off his spot, throwing before he wants to. The defensive game plan is going to be huge. And luckily for the Bills, the defensive game plan is going to be made by your head coach. So I'm going with Sean McDermott on this because I just I'm not a Zach Taylor guy. I don't believe in Zach Taylor. I think Zach Taylor is one of these Sean McVay guys who got a job and ended up with a great quarterback because the guys who don't get great quarterbacks, they're. You know, they out here with their resume in their hand. So, <laughs> uh, score wise, I'm going Buffalo 34 31. Wow. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of flip the script on that one. I'm going to take the Bengals and I'm going to take the Bengals 31 24. I think, oh, okay. I think Bengals get to. Allen more than the Bills get to Burrow. Allen was sacked seven times against Miami. Uh, And I I just think that, you know, uh, they're a little bit more limited in their big play capabilities, meaning that it's one or two guys. And, you know, I mean, if Singletary isn't running all over the field, Allen's going to be running for his life. As we roll to the next game, Chiefs, Jaguars. I think this is one of those ones where I think we both kind of know where we're going, but let's play ball and find out. Quarterback. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I mean, you know, come on, right? I mean, it's Patrick Mahomes. That takes nothing away from Trevor Lawrence and what he's done and the way he's been able to really, you know, uh, come on, uh, come on with Peterson and 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 really grow a huge growth year for Lawrence, no doubt. But we're talking about, you know, um a video game (laughs) you're playing a video game on the other side of the ball and uh and andy reads the best gamer right he's like he's like he's like you got the gate video game and then andy reads the best gamer in in the business so uh, give me uh give me patrick mahomes all day i'm taking patrick mahomes i think patrick mahomes is the mvp of the league i think he's gonna show that i think he's got a lot to prove last year because the way that they ended their season at home on their own field by cincinnati and i think of all the people who need to get back to the super bowl as wild as that sounds i think it is patrick mahomes so i i like trevor lawrence i think what he did last week but i think they shot their load last week man i think that you i think that type of win takes more out of you than a loss does and so i don't i don't see them being able to come out and not, I don't think he's going to throw four interceptions. Again. No, 
But I don't I don't think they're going to come out and, and have that same energy on the road at Kansas City. And I like Doug Peterson, but I'm, I'm going Pat Mahomes yeah. all the way on this skill position. Man, I'll tell you, Jacksonville was impressive in a lot of different areas last week, okay. uh, skill okay. position wise. I mean, look. Lawrence throws four picks early. Your skilled guys couldn't get the ball. They couldn't you do anything with it. And when, when and once he settled in, uh, ETN, e- I always butcher his name. ETN. ETN. That's how you're supposed to pronounce yeah. it. ETN, yes. like the three letters. Yeah. Yes. ETN, um, I think, has a slight, adva- a, a slight advantage over um, uh, – his name is escaping me. Uh, not it was there. Olacek. Olacek. No, well, they've been using uh, KC's really been going to. Um, oh, uh, Olacek. The, the, is that how you say it? number uh, one? P- yeah. Not for p- p- something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, he's been and he's been playing good. And obviously, Kelsey is, you know, um, probably the best overall skilled possession player on the field with what he can do and the damage he can do with Mahomes throwing him the ball. But collectively, I'm going to get a little advantage to Jacksonville. And I think they're going to come in feeling even better about their ability um, weathering that storm and then taking over the game as the game progressed. Pacheco, Isaiah Pacheco. Pacheco. Pacheco, that's right, because I knew it was a. There used to be an old fight doctor named Erdy Pacheco was the guy that everybody in the old Ali days he would come in and check their eyes. Ferdy Pacheco, yeah. But I, I just like you know, ETN was really impressive, and um, you know, slight advantage Jacksonville overall. I I think that at every I think at every position I think the Chiefs are better. I think they're better. I like ETN, but I think with the way they've used Pacheco. Running the ball, receiving the ball out of the backfield. I think he's been a better all around running back, which it works better in the Kansas City system. I think the Kansas City has used these weapons led by Travis Kelsey to throw to everybody. Juju Smith Schuster has had a, a pretty decent year. Uh, like I said, Travis Kelsey's had a great year. They've just, they've had so many guys show up. They've had so many guys do things that you didn't see coming from them. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, like I mentioned before. Jerick McKinnon mm-hmm. gets had some cover. Kadarius Tony, like they've had guys just keep giving you something. And so I think for me, it's Kansas City all the way. Uh defense. Defense. And now this is a little tricky. Defense, who you think? I think this one's a little tricky. Well, you look, you know, I mean, look, um, Jack's Jack's defense was really strong in spurts early in the year end of the year right um and lately if when you look at it here they've they've uh you know 16 points to tennessee three to houston three to the jets they were able to beat dallas the game before that their defense really stepped up once the chargers weren't given just cake field (laughs) position on every play in the first 30 minutes their defense really came alive um, it's a tough one. I'm going to call it a draw only because I like, you know, I, I, obviously Kansas city's been there before they've been able to, you know, plug guys in, lose guy, find another guy, get, you know, you know get scheme. They've done a great job. And, they, and I'm, so I'm going to give Jacksonville a, a draw here just based on performance lately. Um, but you know, I don't think that's a, I don't think any of these things that I, I may even draw or get is going to be enough. But I'll go draw on the defense. I, I this is very tricky because I think Chris Jones is the best pass rusher. I think he'll be the best defensive player on the field. But I think Tavon Walker has the same ability. I, but. I just don't think you're going to be able to see that because Patrick Mahomes gets rid of the ball so fast. They they've got that thing on a string. It's such a it's so streamlined the way that the Kansas City Chiefs offense operates. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that the Chiefs defense because I think Chris Jones and the way that they've built that defense around him to get to the quarterback. The, the Jaguars don't even have a guy with five sacks. Like and Chris Jones yeah. got triple that. So I'm gonna go with Kansas City because I think that. Chris Jones will be the difference. I really do, and I don't necessarily see Travion Walker. I don't really uh, necessarily see Josh Allen, the defensive version of Josh Allen, 
I don't I don't see them having the same impact that they yeah. did against the Chargers. And they're the going to have, right? Obviously, you're right. Like Kansas City is going to have the easier task defensively than the Jaguars right. are. So, all right, we got know. one minute. Give me coach and score. Coach and score. One minute. Coach Andy Reid all, all day long. I love Peterson, but I'm going to take Andy Reid, especially at home. And I got the Chiefs 35 24. 35 24. Chiefs. I'm going to go Chiefs as well. I'm going to give you 35. Uh, twenty four. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Thirty five, twenty four yeah. sounds about yeah. right. Yeah. Um, I think they're. Because... I think Jacksonville's always going to be playing from about ten to thirteen down. Yeah, kind of in, yeah. in that game a little bit. I just feel like that. Because if you if you because if I because I wanted to go 30, 35, 28, but that's a close game. That's a one score game, and I don't think it's going to be that. And so 20, no. 35, 24. <laughs> Seems like around the, the place to be. We'll tell you who's next on the John's list and what's happening on the NFC when we come back on Brown and Lawhead right here on the Mighty 1090 Baby Baby. Okay. Brown and Lawhead coming to you live here on the Mighty 1090 ESPN. Joined by Jason Lawhead. I'm John Browner. We are giving you the fun part of the facts here on radio, on, well, I almost said TV, on YouTube and in the podcast landscape. To do that, to find anything that you missed on the show as we went over the the AFC side of the playoff bracket, now we're going to do the NFC side. You can head over to the iTunes podcast store and also YouTube, like, share, and subscribe under the Kaplan and Crew fan page or whatever they're calling it these days. The name's always changing on some things. We're part of the, we're the number one show in the Great Friends Podcast Network. Booey! Uh, in the first half, we chose our games. We chose Jason chose. The Bengals and Bengals uh, uh, Bills. I chose the Bills. Jason has a 31-24. I have a 34-31. Uh, when it comes to the Chiefs, Jacksonville, we both chose the Chiefs 35-24. Miraculously, it just kind of all fell into place. It made sense. Uh, Jason, these are this next couple of games. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia, New York. Um, This is... We, we, let's just let's just go down to John's list. For those of you, if you're new to the show, we do this thing called John's list. This is the way we pick games. We go, who's the best quarterback? Who's got the best skill position players? Who's got the best defense? And who's got the best coach? We melt that down. We give you a score. We give you a team. Philadelphia, New York. Jason, give it to me. Coach. We going co sorry, quarterback, coach? Quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. Quarterback. Well, I'll tell you, you know, I, I'm – Obviously, Hertz has had an MVP type season, but it was, mm -hmm. it seems a long time ago since we've seen that MVP player. Seems so long ago, doesn't it? Since we've seen the guy wow, that was playing okay. at an MVP level. I'm just saying, doesn't it? Doesn't it seem like a long time ago since we saw that Jalen Hurts that wasn't banged up, that wasn't sitting out games? It feels like this injury wasn't so serious and then it kept getting a little more serious and as it gets closer mm -hmm. to the day it gets a little more serious and then if he's still in pain after that many days off and then a bye week you kind of go mm. and so as much as I would yell Jalen Hurts from the top of my lungs here uh, because of everything that you saw going into the first 14 games what as for as long as we haven't seen him we've seen a Daniel Jones play really good football so right. in this matchup, particularly just in this matchup, on this Sunday, after seeing Daniel Jones last week on the road, I and granted that Minnesota defense isn't what he's going to see in Philly outside in the cold, no doubt. But that game they got blown out was a long time ago that he played bad. It was mm -hmm. a much closer game that he played much better in, in the most recent game. I'm going to call it a draw just on this Sunday. I'm not going to say Daniel wow. Jones is, is an even quarterback with Jalen Hurts, but Jalen Hurts so far removed from the great play we've seen him, and we've got nothing to judge him by over the course of this injury where we have a lot to judge Daniel Jones by. I'm going to call it a draw on this Sunday matchup. And, you know, I like Jalen Hurts. I've always liked him. I liked how he how he handled everything at Alabama. I like how he just went to Oklahoma and did his business and was a Heisman candidate. And then in, in a way he's just come in and been a tough kid and not made any excuses early on as, as an Eagle. So in the long term, I think Jalen Hurts is the better quarterback. But for this particular matchup, I'm going to give the matchup a draw. I got to tell you. I don't know how this is going to sound, but I like Daniel Jones better. Here's why. 
Here's why. The Philadelphia Eagles have weapons on mm -hmm. weapons on weapons. And they don't use they don't use Jalen Hurts more as a thrower. They use him as more of a, a mixture of a runner and a thrower with all those weapons. Giants don't have those weapons. They really don't. And I know the Philly defense has been good this year. But I think a combination of Brian Debo and I yeah. think the, the, the magic that he's put on Daniel Jones. We saw Daniel Jones' best game last week. I think you're going to see Daniel Jones top that game against better competition this week coming up. So I, I like Daniel Jones better, man. I, he's doing way more with a lot less. And I think that the, the, the Philly defense, I think they're going to see some things that they weren't able to see. And what's the number one thing we found out in these games over the previous weekend? It's hard to beat a division team three times unless you're the 49ers. Mm -hmm. So, and the closest thing we have to the 49ers is the Eagles, who had to buy. So, if we're if we're gonna see something like San Francisco, Seattle, or are we gonna see something where it's Buffalo, Miami, where it shouldn't be close, but you look up at the score, you're going, they're still in this, or will it be like uh, Cincinnati, uh, Baltimore, where if that play doesn't happen at the goal line, Baltimore might still mm -hmm. be playing. So, I. I'm I'm taking Daniel Jones in this man. I'm taking Daniel Jones because I think Daniel not a, Jones not Daniel, crazy, dude. It's not Daniel crazy. Jones. Daniel Jones is gonna show us something that we haven't seen. We haven't seen from Jalen Hurts in a while since that injury. So I'm I'm taking Daniel Jones. Skill positions. Well, I mean, AJ Brown makes it hard, you know, but I said this. And you called me on it. I said this last week about Justin Jefferson. And then you called me on it with Barkley. And I had to come back around to tell you how much I loved Barkley and how much I agree that Barkley mm -hmm. is the best skill position player on the field. And the way Barkley went out and did his business and the way the variety in, in areas Barkley can be effective and where he can get touches mm -hmm. and where he can decoy himself and where he can just be in formation and be a problem, whether you put him out on the split or in the slot or right behind the quarterback. And um, if they ever want to have trickery, they can just, you know, direct snap it to him. They can do a lot of things. So I'll, I'll take this one as a draw as well, because I kind of learned my okay. lesson given Minnesota, the, the, the edge last week. Um, but you know, if Hertz is in there, and he's phys he's physically capable to do what he can do with AJ Brown out there and a lot of the other weapons they have. I like the way this receiving core from New York has progressed, along with Barkley and Daniel Jones being the runner that he can be. I'll say that's a draw as well. I'm gonna go draw, draw on quarterback and skill. I'm going with the Eagles. I think Saquon's the best player on the field, but I think the Eagles have a multitude of players at different peak positions that gives them the edge. The Giants wide receivers are a bunch of guys who are no names. And Kenny mm -hmm. Galladay didn't show up after they paid him a ton of money. But you've got yeah, A.J. Right? Brown, who's been great all year. You've got Devontae Smith, who's been great all year. You've got Miles Sanders, who's running for money because his contract is up at the end of this year. At the, uh, I can't remember their tight end's name, but they've got somebody at every position, at every skill position, that can get the job done on their own. So I, I like them from a skill position-wise because they've got so much. I think the problem with having so much is that you don't know who is the guy they're going to go to. I think that's what kind of makes this harder for me. But then I look at the totality of it, and I go skills for Philly. But I think that putting your game plan around Saquon makes everything else go. So I, I like Philadelphia as a whole. Yeah as all this parts together, but Saquon is the best player, but I'm going to go with Philadelphia for skill set. Yeah. I mean, it's a good pick too. You know, it's a, they, they have you, when you look at, you know, all their leading, you know, the, the leading rushers, leading receivers from game to game, it, you know, as mm -hmm. much as Brown, it, there's so many different names in there. And so, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Defense. All right. You got to go Philly here. Um, as much as I like New York's defense, I like them up front. I like the scheming. I like the game planning um at home chomping at the bit waiting to get to him you know you, you know i know that you know daniel jones and, and barkley set out that last game of the season when they played him tougher um but you know as far as when you look at all of it over the kind of the totality totally uh you know over the course of the year you got to give it to philly 
Yeah, this is a uh, this is easy. This is yeah. Easy. Philly's been better all year. Yeah, I like what the uh, I like what Kayvon Thibodeau's been able to do, kind of getting finding his way his rookie season. But that's about it. I like the Giants' mm-hmm. pass rush, but they don't have enough. They really don't have enough to cover everything that you're going to see on Sunday. So I'm gonna go with Philly now, Coach. This is a mm-hmm. this is interesting, Coach. Yeah. You got Brian. I Ray like Bowen. Sirianni. Against Nick Sirianni. Yeah, I mean, I like Sirianni. I got nothing against Sirianni. I still think Doug Peterson should be the head coach in Philadelphia. I think that was kind of a, just a raw deal. I mean, he's literally got fired for going to bat for Jalen Hurts, and then look where it Correct. all kind of turned out, right? Correct. So, um, but Sirianni has been a great, you know, uh, replacement, and he's done a great job, and they've responded to Sirianni in, in these couple of years. You know, they were scrappy last year and found their way into the playoffs, and they were – really good and they got out of the gate and they 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 did it wasn't just some oh they're good for three or four weeks and then they come down to earth they've been that team in a tough division in a division where three teams are still in the playoffs and and washington yes. and, and washington uh was was darn near right there in the finish line to be the be a wild card team so um but day ball has shown me that he's working really well with probably the least amount of anybody left in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so I'm going to give the, the slight edge to day ball, but not on a knock because there's not, that has nothing to do with Sirianni. It just has kind of what day ball has been doing, how his players have responded, how they've just kind of, you know, stayed the course. They could have slipped. They could have, they could have went in the dumper when things didn't look like, well, that record started faltering. And then they got the ship right again. And they looked good in Minnesota as a team unit, one that way. And I'm going to take Dayball. I am easily, easily taking Dayball in this conversation. <laughs> I think he is he has worked magic, mm-hmm. magic with Daniel Jones. He's helped Saquon Barkley find his groove. He's basically catered his offense around. And when Kenny Galladay didn't give you anything, he Nothing. just went all right. Next, he just went next he just man went up. Great check. Yeah. And, and these yeah, guys, really and these guys have showed up for him. So, man, I, I'm picking at the game. I'm picking Debo for the coach. This game, though, I got to tell you, I'm I'm picking Philly, and I'm picking Philly, twenty eight. I'm picking Philly twenty eight to twenty eight twenty. I'm gonna take the Giants. Woo! I'm gonna take this. this. Is gonna be my upset of the week. I like the Woo! way the Giants are playing football. I like the fact that the Giants have had to play. You know, going into that last once they sealed it on the last week, they obviously were able to take the break, but they were playing playoff lives football um, for you know uh, uh, the last few weeks going in when really Philly was only just looking over their shoulder, going, "Is anybody gonna catch us for the one seat? Does anybody have a chance?" Everybody's canceling each other out on this one seed, and they had the bye week. Hertz obviously came in and played that last week, but like, will the bye week? You know, will that? Yeah, you know, he played against a team that wasn't playing for anything that last Giants game, and so can he come back off of a bye week, feel really good again? I think that they're gonna chase him around and make life tough, and I think they're gonna roll over from their you know, roll from their last win, and I'm taking them 31-30 in a in a the best game of the weekend. Wow, that's a shocker. Okay, mm-hmm. Dallas, San Francisco. Quarterback, who you got? I hate giving the slight edge to Dallas, uh, <laughs> especially the way Purdy's played and what you know Dak can do when he's not being, you know, playing it. Yeah, look, Tampa Bay, that wasn't a playoff team. He, he They're literally no, going from the softest team in the playoffs – to the right. most fierce physical team in the playoffs. And not just defensively, right. right? Not just defensively. These guys put it on you physically on the offensive end. And so I'm going to give like a, a, a 50.1 to a 49.9 edge to Dak because he's 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 been the quarterback there for a long time. He's been working with McCarthy for a few years. He he he's he's playing with big confidence off of Tampa Bay. It may be a false sense of security confidence. But he is playing with that, and I'm going to just give him that little bit of nick and then let him either prove that he is a guy that can win this game or be the guy that goes and, and crawls under a rock. And then, uh, you know, I want to be wrong because I'm rooting for the 49ers, but I'm not 
it's 51, 50.1 to 49.9 in Dak's favor. Listen, man, I think the Brock Purdy train kind of comes to a, a screeching halt here. And Ooh. like those those passes that he were throwing, that people are like, look how gutsy he is. Look how he's extending these plays. Those are going to be interceptions this week. Wow. But I also got to tell you, not a Dak fan. This is a tie for me. Okay. This is a tie. I think Brock Purdy has been fantastic. I think sure Brock has. Purdy has been fantastic. And I think he might have found a way for them to weasel out of this whole Trey Lance thing magically. Because mm-hmm. Brock Purdy works. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me how. I think it's more Kyle Shanahan than anything. But Brock Purdy works. And I think oh, and, and someone someone said if the if the 49ers make it to the NFC championship game, would you put Garoppolo in? And if someone else on that same panel said, listen to what you just said. If they make the NFC championship, Brock Purdy is doing what he's supposed to do. Why would you then put Jimmy Garoppolo in? So, and because of that, I'm giving the tie because I like where Purdy is. I know what Dak Prescott is, and I don't like it. So I that's the tie for me. Okay. Skill positions. I, well, I'm going to give the skilled positions of San Francisco with a healthy Debo Samuel. When you look at the fact that McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, and, and George Kittle, those three guys at their respective positions lead the NFL in yards after catch at the running back, wide receiver, and the tight end. I mean, Kittle's getting more yards after catch than Kelsey is because teams are able to guard Kelsey a little more than not having Tyreek Hill out in the open. So... They they were they're able to do that 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 and they're able to uh, put put it on you physically I think just you know um, from the time they snap the ball at the offensive line and all three of those skilled positions uh, I'm gonna give the edge you know as much as I love C D Lamb and they've got a couple of good running backs in Dallas and Pollard but like I said this is false last week you can't go based off of last week and um, as the greatest Pollard played last week um, he's gonna see a, a front. Him and Zeke are going to see a front. And I mean, in, let me introduce you to Nick Bosa and Fred Warner, fellas. <laughs> so right. I'm taking, I'm taking, I'm taking San Francisco. I think this is San Francisco. Uh, I think the deterioration of Zeke and the mm-hmm. amazing disappearing act that CeeDee Lamb can be from time to time. I like the fact they added T.Y. Hilton, but T.Y. Hilton ain't going to be yeah. that big of a difference in this game. He's not physical uh, enough. Right. And you, what you're going to need is to win this game running the ball because that's what San Francisco is going to do. And I don't think that Dallas has that in them against that defense. So skill position wise, I'm going with San Francisco because I think Debo, who did get hurt in the last game, but nevertheless, uh, Debo, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, like you said, I think that's too much to overcome, even with a guy like Purdy, who may, again, like I said, it's going to come to a screeching halt. I like those skill positions. Defense. Well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take San Francisco. Um, uh, mm-hmm. This is the game to prove our uh, Dallas. Are you this defense? Are you them? This is it. This is the game, Dallas. Right? Like you can play, put all the blame on Dak for anything else in the past that you want and anything else you want. But are you them? Because they're already mm-hmm. them. Yeah. So are you them? I'm gonna take San Francisco because I already know that they're them. And I'm not using pronouns in that sense. I'm meaning they are (laughs) them in the sense that they've proved it. They've been to the bowl. They've been almost close a couple more times. Like, and and these guys are healthy. And um, yeah, I love Micah Parsons. Great player. The, you know, their DBs get after it, Uh, Mm -hmm. but give me San Francisco on, you know, a 58 kind of 42 edge. And here you go, Dallas. This is your time. This is your chance. Are you them? A lot, of, a lot of people tell you Michael Parsons is the best defensive player. I don't think he'll be the best defensive player on the field on Sunday. I think mm-hmm. Joey, I think Nick, I think Nick, Nick, aka Mago Bosa is better. I do, regardless of his political affiliation. The guy's a damn good football player. So I, I, I think the best football player on that field is going to be Nick Bosa, and that's bad for Dallas because they are really the sum of their parts. They're not a good team. They've got exceptional players. Right, and if you have, and if you have the 49ers have a good team and the best player, and they use it as in a cohesive way to to dominate on the defensive side of the ball, and I don't see this being any different. I got San Francisco on defense, and I got San Francisco on defense by a lot. Uh, coach, 
So I'm, I don't care Super Bowl ring or not. I don't care how many people are praising him for how good they looked against a team that shouldn't even have been anywhere near. That team should be picking one, two, or three in the draft, the Buc- Buccaneers. Um, I'm going to go with with Shanahan, the way he's been able to – because the, 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 the San Francisco Shanahan – is better than the Dallas McCarthy in this in this uh, sample size, and you know we're not talking that that Super Bowl ring with Aaron Rodgers was a long time ago, and and long uh, time ago, and uh, you know I, I'm taking Kyle Shanahan with the way he's been able to go from Lance to Garoppolo after dumping Garoppolo, come in with uh, Brock mm-hmm. Purdy, and uh, stay the way they've stayed. I mean they've won 11 games in a row. Crazy. I think this is Shanahan. People say Shanahan chokes. Okay, cool. We all got to learn. We all got our spots. I think I think Kyle Shanahan has absolutely become one of the best offensive coaches in the game of football. And I'm counting Andy Reid in that. I'm count. I, I I'm he's the next Andy Reid. It what he's, he's the next able Andy Reid. It doesn't matter who the quarterback is. He made Matt Ryan the MVP of the league, and people forget that. Mm-hmm. Look what he's done with Jimmy Garoppolo's career. Look what he's now done with Brock Purdy's career. Imagine the, what he could have done with Trey Lance's career. I I, I think that – Let me Kyle tell you something. Hand- Go back. I just want to interrupt you for one second. Go back to the – I'm a Cleveland Browns fan. Go back to the when Johnny Manziel was thrust into the starting role from the front office. That was a front office move. Kyle Shanahan was the offensive coordinator in Cleveland. They were 7-4 and four and in first place with Brian Hoyer at quarterback, and Haslam couldn't help himself. We got to get Johnny in. We got to get Johnny in. Hoyer played one bad half against Buffalo, and Manziel was the starting quarterback the rest of the year. They lost every game going out. They finished seven and nine. Shanahan said, "Get me out of this place." They ran Shanahan out of. Time. We'll, we'll we'll tweet we'll okay. tweet our scores. We gotta go. Brown and Lawhead P. <laughs>